So this one has some fractions in it. It's not going to change anything in the quadratic formula stuff. And particularly on this one, just to make it a little bit easier, I would look to subtract the 1 half y squared from both sides. So, uh, and yeah, you, so you could get rid of the fractions, but I'm just going to keep them just to show that we can. So I'm going to subtract y, uh, negative 1 half y squared from both sides. I'm going to subtract 1 half y squared. Dang it. So that gives me 0 equals uh, negative 1 half y squared plus y plus 1 half. So this is okay because now it shows that a is a negative 1 half, b is 1, and c now is a positive 1 half. So yeah, if you wanted to change those and subtract y and 1 half from both sides, just makes these negative and this positive. That's not a problem. The answer is still the same. So let's go ahead and look at the formula now. And uh, just for the sake of showing that it doesn't matter what order we do this in, right? I'm going to replace the a values. Whoops, that's up red. With a negative one half. I'm going to replace the B values with 1. That's a pretty easy value to work with. And then the C value with 1 half. So now X equals, that's still a negative 1, but plus or minus the square root of 1 squared is 1 minus 4 times negative 1 half times 1 half. That ends up being a negative 1. And that's all over a negative 1 because here we had this 2 times negative 1 half, which is negative 1. And then just working on the inside of this square root here, we uh, would have to end up adding those two. So I end up with uh, negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 2 all over negative 1. And from here I can split this up just because I have that common denominator of negative 1. And what that does is it makes things a little bit easier. Because now right here I've got a negative 1 over 1 which is 1. I still have plus or minus. And we do have the square root of 2 over negative 1. But, um, and, and we can keep that there. The problem here is that this negative 1 here at the bottom is not going to change the plus or minus. I mean... If you wanted to look at it like this, you could change this now because that's all it's going to do is just change the operation into a minus plus, but that's a little informal there. We would still want to indicate that that's plus or minus, and then you'd still have that square root of 2. Uh, let, me, let me talk about that a little bit more, all right? So let's look at this expression right here, and let's just rewrite it, but we're going to write, rewrite it as two separate answers instead of the one single answer like we have here at the bottom, okay? All right, so this is what the expression would look like. Now, negative one divided by negative one in both cases is still one, right? And here I would be adding, uh, the square root of two divided by negative one would make that a negative square root of two, but since I'm adding a negative now, I can just change that to a minus. And that would be one answer right there. <clears throat> On the other hand, here at the bottom, I would be subtracting. It's the same idea. I have the square root of 2 divided by negative 1 simply makes that a negative. But since I'm subtracting a negative now, I could make that a plus. And this would be my second answer. Notice it's still expressed the same way here at the bottom in the answer that we have. But if you want to write as two separate answers, uh, that's fine. And again, this is kind of showing why that negative one in the denominator doesn't change the fact that we have a plus minus uh, answers for this problem. Now, of course, you could check this, right? You could uh, plug these two values into the original equation that we had here at the top. And if you did that, you'd find that you'd get a true statement 
meaning that both answers are correct or would make the statement true.